can you count to six? Well, congratulations. You can kill Vorkath. Let's get after it. Hey everyone, this is Zerbus from Old Screw RuneScape, and welcome to the best, most efficient, and simple method of killing Vorkath. Now, it doesn't matter if you're killing Vorkath for the first time on Dragon Slayer 2, or if you're just trying to be more effective so that way you can get more kills per trip, this is going to be the best guide for you, hands down. Let's go over some requirements for a Vorkath. So, obviously, you're going to need every stat needed for Dragon Slayer 2 up to this point. But you're going to want base 80 combat stats. We're talking 80 attack, 80 strength, 80 defense. And the reason for this is because at 78 attack, you unlock the Dragon Hunter Lance, which is by far the best weapon for melee to kill Vorkath. You're also going to want to have at least 70 prayer and unlock piety by doing the King's Ransom quest with the Night Waves training ground done. Now this whole video is going to be based around killing Vorkath with melee. Melee is hands down the best and most efficient way to kill Vorkath. You see a lot of other people doing it with range, but their kills aren't as fast and it's more cost effective doing it with melee. However, if you are watching this video and you are doing it with range, this still applies to you. The only difference is when you go in to do the fight, you're praying range instead of praying magic. In this video, you'll see me praying magic. That is the only difference. The mechanics are still the same. Now let's go over what gear is needed for this and what gear I use. Obviously, use whatever gear you have and what your budget allots you, but when it comes to melee, use a really good stab weapon because Vorkath is weak to stab. In the helmet slot, I have a serpentine helm, so that way I don't have to drink any anti-venoms, freeze up an inventory space. I have a fire cape, the salve amulet imbued and enchanted. I just have a blessing for the prayer. I have the BGS for my spec. I have the bandos top and bottom. I use Barrow's gloves, dragon boots, and a berserker ring that's not imbued. Moving on to the inventory setup. I have the Slayer Staff for Crumble Undead. Always make sure that it's auto cast setup for Crumble Undead. You'll save yourself a bunch of headaches. And then for my swap, I have the Dragon Hunter Lance and the Dragon Fire Shield. And then I have my Rune Pouch, which is set up for the Crumble Undead spell along with teleport to house so that way I can get out of there and with that I use chaos law and dust runes and then I use four prayer potions one super combat potion and one extended super anti fire potion and then the rest of my inventory I just use karamb wands alrighty now how to get to the vorkath lair so first things first you're going to get to the lunar isle whether you're using poh or the spellbook you're going to talk to the really mean bank teller on the far left side or in the middle and then they're going to teleport you to the north of relica you're going to use my man torfin right here to get to ungale and then from here you'll just run a little bit north now that you're here i'm going to break down vorkath's attack styles and mechanics and make it as simplified as possible the first attack style is going to be this blue little wave since you are praying magic for the entire duration of the fight you do not need to worry about this and you will never take damage from it Another attack Vorkath has is this orange little blast. Since you are praying magic and you have anti-fire protection, you do not need to worry about this and you won't take damage. Vorkath will also send out this green blast, which is a venom. Since you're wearing the serpentine helm, it'll automatically negate it. And if you're not wearing it, just take a sip of anti-venom and you're still not going to get damage because you have the anti-fire protection and praying magic. Now let's get into the more complicated attacks that Vorkath has. So the next one is going to be this purple blast. All it does is just disables your prayer, and then all you have to do is just click your quick prayer, which is set up to protect from magic and piety, and get right back into the fight. This spiky ball right here is his range attack. It has a max hit of 32. It's pretty inaccurate, but if it hits you, just eat a Karambon. It's no big deal. The next attack you're going to see is Vorkath swiping his wing at me. This is his melee attack. Once again, max hit of 32. Pretty inaccurate. If you get hit by it, no big deal. Eat a Karambon, mate. Alrighty, this next one you're going to see is the Dragon Bomb. So he's going to fire up this little Dragon Bomb up into the air. And since you have Walk activated and your Run is deactivated, all you have to do is click two tiles away while holding the Control button, and it'll make you run. You do not want to get hit by this. It has a maximum hit of 121, and I don't know about you, but I don't have 121 health. After the 6th attack, so on the 7th attack, he will use one of his two specials. Remember me talking about counting to 6? This is why. 
So the first one is this white blast in which he freezes you. All you have to do is go to your Slayer Staff, which has the Crumble Undead auto-casted. You click on the little spawn that comes up, you'll automatically kill him every time. Then all you gotta do is switch back to your Dragon Hunter Lance, put your prayer on, take a shot of the prayer potion if you need to, and get right back into the fight. Alrighty, and this next special is the Acid Phase, and I cannot stress this enough, you cannot stop moving or else you will die. And that's where all of your deaths are coming from, is you stopped moving. And also, this is the reason that we have our run off and our walk on. In the beginning, don't try and wooks walk. Don't try and be fancy or anything like that. I'm going to help you out on a strategy to get you through this phase. So as soon as he throws up the acid, you're going to want to start moving or else you're going to get hit with the 40 right off the bat. So what you're going to want to do is find yourself some real estate, at least, you know, eight to 10 tiles at first, and you're just going to walk between those tiles. And the key to this is, is the tile that you click on you never want to get to before you turn around. See how I clicked on that tile up there? I'm not going to make it to that tile. I'm going to click behind me because if I make it to that tile and I turn around on that tile, boom, getting hit with a 32 to a 40 and I'm just eating up Quran bonds like I'm at hometown buffet. And once you're done with this phase, you just turn your prayer on, get right back into the fight. Alrighty, now here is an example kill in real time with me voicing over. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to BGS spec them and then put back on my gear. That was one hit. There's two hits. Three hits with melee. He didn't hit me. Four hits. Five hits. There's the Dragon Ball move away. Now here comes his sixth hit. So on the sixth hit, since it's random, I'm always going to move away on that first one. Because if it's the acid spot like it was, I didn't take any damage. And if it's the freezing one, well, guess what? Now he just froze me and I'm only two steps away from it. It doesn't matter. That's how you negate... Um, getting hit by the acid on that first one because if you move away you're fine now put my uh, quick prayer back on hit me with melee no big deal there's two he hit me with the range three hit me with the melee again four magic he'll never get me with that five blast he'll never get me with that either now the sixth hit came up i switched to my slayer staff a little bit early that's fine no big deal boom hit him Prayer, Lance, take a shot of a peapot, back into it. Oh, you turned my prayer off. No big deal. That's one. Two, bomb. Three with another bomb. Remember, I'm just holding control when I move on those. There we go. Now I can get one more hit before the acid. Yep. All right, there's the acid. I walk away. And with this, I'm wooks walking. I'll let you guys know how to wooks walk at the end of this video if you guys are interested in it, but as of right now, I'm not going to do it while commenting over this uh, example kill. And with wooks walking, um, you only can hit 50% of the damage, so that's why I turned the prayer off. There's one, two, remember you're just counting to six, three, four, five, it's easy money. Six. Now I know he's about to hit me with the white blast. Switch over. Turn my prayer off. You don't have to. And it helps if you have that little spawn tagged so that way you can just click on the box itself. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Turn my prayer off. And I got one more hit and I can move. Oh, I took some damage from the acid, not from him itself. So that's no big deal. Sometimes he'll spawn the acid thing right where you're standing. And that's fine. Take like six damage. That's better than taking a 40. So now you just see me wooks walking in. Turn my prayer on, back into the fight. This one's taking a little bit longer than normal. That's just due to RNG, but that's fine. There's two, three, and he's dead. Pretty easy, not too bad. And what is that, like 150, 170k with the bones? Took me, you know, not too long. Easy money. This boss prints money, guys. That's why you're watching this. That's why you need to be effective, like this method. Alrighty, now getting into Wooks walking. So, first off, you're going to walk away from him before the splats land so that we don't take that 40. And then you're going to, all you need is three pieces of real estate. Here's my three. Boom, hit a seven from the splat. That's not a big deal. So as soon as you start hitting him, that's when you want to turn around. As soon as the animation of you swinging the sword, 
turn around. And then when you're turning around, that's when you want to click on him again. So here I turn around, click. Animation, click. Turn around, click. Animation to be hitting him, click. And that's all you're doing. And if you're decent at this, you should be able to get six hits in. And once again, you're only doing 50% damage. But hey, that's better than doing no damage, just walking from tile to tile. Alrighty guys, so that's going to wrap it up for this guide on Vorkath. I hope this is the last guide that you're going to ever have to do for Vorkath because it was so efficient for you. Now go out there, start racking up that KC, start printing some money on this boss be because this boss will get you so much money. I have have 1400 kills on this and I've made probably close to 180 million on this boss. This boss is no joke when it comes to printing money. Out of those 1,400 kills, though, if you look at the collection log, the only thing that I've gotten besides the Vorkath heads, which is 1 in 50, is the Dragon Bone Necklace. So hopefully, sooner than later, the RNG gods are going to bestow a blessing upon me, and I get the pet, or I get one of the visages. But like I said, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed this guide, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more guides like this, then please hit the subscribe button, hit the ring bell so that way you get notifications every time I upload. And I'm also doing a group Iron Man series on this channel too. So if you guys want to see some Iron Man related content, please check that out. Thank you everybody. Have a great day and I love you.